Another collector's edition wave is upon us from McFarlane and with it a new take on one of the most beloved and famous portrayals of the Dark Knight. But did McFarlane cut a few corners along the way? Upon first glance it sort of looks that way because when they announced that the blue and grey or lightish grey version of the Dark Knight Returns Batman was going to be one of the collector's editions I was kind of ecstatic considering how far McFarlane has come. I've mentioned, uh, I kind of hinted a couple of videos past that McFarlane is sort of entering this turning point, especially with a particular two-pack that I have yet to cover and momentarily I will, but I just feel like we're in a slight transition phase with McFarlane where yeah, some of the prices may be getting a little bit uh, of a boost as far as some of the standard releases like the Platinums that people have been finding in Walmarts, but they're going for like about $22, $23, maybe even $24 at some point. But at least you see where some of those costs are going to. Cloth capes, improvements on the sculpt, on the paint, extra accessories, a lot of little nuances that make me go, yeah, there's definitely some improvements being made and I'm able to stomach the price increase. For $30 a pop via the collector's edition wave that go for like this kind of premium ambiance to it all in terms of the collectability, the reflective lettering that's happening on the box to give it that premium feel. I'm like, all right, that's cool and all, but what is exactly included in the box, especially when it comes to, of course, one of the more seminal characters, Batman, and furthermore, one of the most famous forms of literature for not just Batman, but superhero comics, The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller. And so we get this version again. Because we did get a Dark Knight Returns prior. That was part of a Build-A-Figure wave during McFarlane's infancy with the DC Multiverse brand. Now, after a, quite literally three years, I wanted to see if that made at all a difference as far as how far McFarlane has come with painting technology, sculpting, maybe, you know, the addition of a cloth cave, etc. Okay, spoiler alert, none of that really happened. Yeah. At least most of that didn't happen because the one thing that I will remark is that the paint applications behind this brand new blue and gray battle damaged edition that's included in this new collector's edition wave really does look spectacular as far as the paint applications. As you can see, this is the different version of the bat suit except I feel like there's always this weird inaccuracy with different companies. Not just McFarlane, but I feel like there's a lot of them out there that... There's just so many suits inside of that graphic novel that it's just very difficult to kind of really hone it down as far as which is the definitive version of the Dark Knight Returns Batman because you have the black and gray, you have the blue and gray, you have a blue and gray with like the oval symbol which is technically what you're supposed to have here and then of course you have the armorized suit where he takes on Superman. And don't even get started on the Dark Knight Triumphant etc, the, the sequel, all that stuff. It gets a little murky as far as which version you're really looking at and that's no exception here because you can see that for the most part they pretty much took the existing buck and just gave it that blue and gray that's kind of similar to that of the Nightfall version where you have this much lighter shade of gray for the overall suit even though it's sculpted beautifully as far as the wrinkles to make it look like it's actual cloth kind of encompassing the thighs, the bulky physique that he's known for in that version of the Dark Knight Returns and then the blue that is a little turquoisey but still looks very, it just pops. And what really makes it all come together is, of course, the really bright yellow for the utility belt right there with all the pouches right there. That exaggerated version that was illustrated in The Dark Knight Returns that you can tell it's, you know, very girthy and large and bigger than life. And that's okay because when it comes to that very bulky form of physique for certain action figures, you know that McFarlane's going to get it down right because he's always talking about the big and bulky and how he loves big and bulky figures. That's why he created Venom in the first place. And so him tackling The Dark Knight Returns was not going to be any kind of problem, whether it be back in 2021 with that initial Build-A-Figure version. And that was definitely no exception here. And that's because it's pretty much the same guy. Behold! my stuff <laughs> one of my favorite lines from Thor Ragnarok but there you have it the original Dark Knight Returns from the 2021 build a figure for the goddamn horse out of all build a figure accessories that you could have tossed in he decided to go with the horse that was a very strange inclusion but I guess ever so often you're gonna have those weird ones just like recently we had with the Batman Forever build a bat but there you have the two bucks next to each other and there's no mistaking it's the exact same figure. You really are not changing 
almost anything at all. I really do want to say almost because the probably the biggest difference as far as sculpting, as far as actually printing out something brand new, which is probably the only 5% out of the entirety of the figure, is going to be that head sculpt. You'll see right there that you see that the cowl is for the most part identical, but the eyes are probably just a little bit on the wider, slightly more open side. And then the mouth plate is, of course, having a different expression where it still looks like he's grimacing, but it's a bit more on the smiley side with a little bit of teeth kind of peering through as opposed to the Dark Knight original Returns Build-A-Figure version that has the grimace with teeth showing. And quite honestly, from a technical standpoint, purely technical, not subjective, but just technical, I'd say that the original 2021 head sculpt is a little better because they were able to really etch in the teeth and they're just right that looks like it just popped out of the comics. Subjectively, I feel like they're kind of on par. I kind of prefer one over the other because I like the little bit of shading they have on his brow to make that little bit of comic book art kind of peer through the blue. But apart from that, it just looks like they're kind of on par as far as which one you re really would prefer. And who knows, that probably gives an incentive over to customizers to maybe try to paint the blue in with some black to then have that expression, but then be able to swap it with the original 2021 release. Aside from that, I was trying to find as many differences as possible, but no, it's completely the same exact figure. You even have the embossed chest symbol. The only real major differences as far as paint applications is, of course, as I mentioned, the complete swap of color palette for blue and light gray versus the black and darker gray, the brown for the utility belt as opposed to the yellow, and then, of course, the battle damage, which, again, usually I'm not the biggest fan of, but here we do have a prior incarnation that may be better for some folks, so you can see that maybe... It's a little easier to digest the battle damage. And I feel like it's not as in your face as they could have made it. So you have a few gashes on the left leg, but absolutely clean over on the right. You have a couple of scrapes over on the shoulders. But then you have a rather iconic looking gash or like three clawed gash stricken across his bat symbol there that I think is painted on beautifully. But there's just that one part of me that wishes it would have been an actual sculpt indentation into the bat symbol itself and having it be a pain app just makes it all the more clear that this is like i said about 95 percent just a straight up repaint even when that paint is a little bit on the higher quality side you can see right here that the glossiness of the original form of plastic is still kind of peering through with the 2021 that kind of gives it i don't want to say cheap but just that preliminary phase where they're just First starting out with the DC Multiverse brand back in 2021. Whereas with the Collector's Edition Blue, I feel like things are just feeling a little bit better, especially when it comes to those battle damage stamps. But that makes it just all the more tragic to learn that they didn't opt in for any cloth cape. Even the cape is completely identical. It's the exact same cape, except it's got a bit of a glossier sheen to the blue that you have on the new collector's edition. And who knows, maybe that's the reason for why I was remarking a little bit on the newness, if you will, of the paint applications for the brand new one. It's probably because, like I said, they better their technologies. They have probably better printers. They, you know, the manufacturing, whoever's in charge of actually mass producing these things, they probably stepped it up as far as those technologies. You know, they were able to refine their printer heads. But outside of that, it's the exact same cape. And I'm like, yeah, if you're really going to be charging a little bit extra, kind of gearing towards that $30 price tag, and you're re-releasing this guy, I just feel like as a manufacturer and as head of the company, I would be like, all right, this is the opportunity to then take our new advancements of that whole 2.0 debacle and really hone in on the things that people have been liking recently. And one of the big things that I think everyone anonymously on subreddit on twitter on a facebook group is saying is that they love the cloth cape especially the ones with the bendy wire inside i don't know why we couldn't do it here with dark knight returns and i know it's a little bit on the cheaper side to just kind of replicate this guy with the brand new color i, I don't get it you know mcfarlane always says he doesn't need money all right if you don't need money then i'm sorry you could have afforded a cloth cape here that would have gone leaps and bounds of making this guy feel all the more premium so to see it that it's still the same uh, original rubberized cape even if it's stylized in a very neutral position that makes it pretty simple to handle i'm sorry but it's just 
it difficult to not think of what could have been. And since he is the exact same buck, the articulation is going to be no different. If anything, I'm probably going to breeze a little bit through this since I technically already reviewed this guy prior on the channel, granted with different circumstances, a whole different setup, so the lighting may not be as cool as it is right now, uh, in including the audio setup with this new microphone. But I'm still going to give it the very close-up treatment, but I'm going to breeze on through it because, like I said, it's pretty standard in part for the course uh, as far as any McFarlane DC Multiverse figures concern head is able to rotate 360 no problem even with a brand new head sculpt and does a br pretty good job of tilting up and down very generously and even side to side so if anything it's pretty expressive in that manner because of how girthy he is however the arm articulation is a little bit on the stingy side it definitely rotates vertically 360 but extension towards the sides kind of just stops a little bit beyond the t-post but the cape is of course encroaching all over it no real way of shrugging motion or butterfly motion it kind of nudges a little bit but it's not as complimentary as i've seen on some other figures and because of the girthiness and the physique that they decided to go in with this time around with the original buck and this new one from both 2021 and 2024 respectively you're gonna have this joint on the elbow where they decided to fuse the bicep with the elbow so he only has one hinge that is able to bend 90 degrees but you have the swivel right above it so you have those two joints conjoined right there yes that's a pun Unfortunately, because this is a much older buck, I'm skipping a little bit ahead here, but both the wrists and the ankles are sporting that very antiquated ball joint. So it does a good job of rotating the wrists and rotating the ankles as far as horizontal, but they're a little finagly when it comes to dealing the hinges inside because, like I said, it's got that bulkier ball joint that I'm not the biggest fan of and feels just a little bit robust and rigid that you kind of have to be careful with the pegs inside but both of them can technically still get the job done as far as the bending inwards and outwards for the feet and the wrists and the hands but like I said especially with the when it comes to the ankles rotating you kind of have to grab the entirety of the joint and rotate it because when you try to do it by just a foot it's only going to be doing a little bit of that pivoting action and I remember now that one of the things I kind of complained about the original Dark Knight Returns figure is that the torso is not the best when it comes to either crunching inwards or extending towards the back and that goes for both the waist and the mid torso but rotating is actually no problem in the mid torso cut waist cut rotation it can kind of nudge side to side but it does look like the belt and diaper piece is still kind of limiting it and restrict restricting it somewhat but crunching side to side is not too bad it could have been a little better still though and then the top legs are still pretty interesting because you can still flex them forwards about that far right about right there and extend them towards the back slightly but not as good as it could be and extension towards the sides however should still be pretty complimentary because if you couldn't do so, then that would render the thigh swivels a little bit useless because as you can note right there, just like the original 2021 buck, you have the thigh swivels, which means that you can technically still use this guy on the Build-A-Figure horse if you would like to pose him on the saddle. And therefore, those thigh swivels are going to come in handy. Knees can still bend at the two joints right about right there. And then, of course, the toes can still flex all the way up. So... Like I said, it's being the, the same exact buck, the articulation is not going to be any different, it's pretty much identical. And likewise, some of the accessories are also going to be identical, except at least we can take a little bit of a breath of relief that at least McFarlane sweetened the deal slightly. Both Batman come with, of course, the fisted hands, and then on the side you have the open, slightly gripping hands, so you have, of course, the... Black and blue right about right there that I almost got kind of mixed up. And those gripping hands could be used for him to be holding the battering with the rope on it. So it's the exact same accessory, rubberized and painted black, so nothing different there. But whereas the 2021 release kind of stopped there as far as accessories are concerned because the rest of the value packed in for the 25 bucks was then ported over to the horse pieces that you utilize to build that goddamn animal. Whereas with the collector's edition, bumping it up to $30, you'd think, okay, what are they going to do here to kind of sweeten the deal? And I want to say for the most part, they kind of did most part because McFarlane threw in an extra set of hands and these two are actually pretty welcome. You have, of course, the open hand to kind of pose him in that way like he's leaping forward with the Carrie Kelly Robin like he does in that panel, that iconic panel. So it's cool that you at least have one open hand to pose him with along with the Batarang brass knuckle 
hand, if you want to call it that. Basically, when he takes a couple of batarangs and just puts them in between his knuckles to pretty much give him like a Wolverine-ish looking kind of hand. But I've always loved this thing that he always utilized in the comics. It's like, why don't other Batman really do that? Instead of throwing batarangs, just grab a whole bunch of them and just use it like a like a <laughs> I just I get a little hyped when I see this hand. I'm sorry, but I do really appreciate that Frank Miller wrote that into the script for the Dark Knight Returns because I up until that point I'm like, why doesn't Batman do that? And I'm pretty glad to see that a piece of medium did tackle that. So it's cool that McFarlane did throw in that hand to have him pose him with that because that's pretty uh that's pretty uh hard as the kids like to say. And if you want to get even harder, you can get hard with this. <laughs> Oh, what's happening now? Hey, who knows? You know, th don't let me judge you. You know, if you want to get hard with the Bruce Wayne alternate unmasked head, go ahead and do so because he does come with an alternate older Bruce Wayne head there with completely chiseled uh, physique as far as the facial expression, just like Frank Miller designed in his comics along with his illustrators. You got the gray hair. It's well painted. Granted, a little bit on the much more tanner side than what you would expect here out of the 2021, but still, he's got a bit of dirt, a bit of battle damage, and thank God... Mine comes with perfectly, well, I don't want to say perfectly, but much better aligned eyes because I have seen some people post photos on the Reddit with their alternate Bruce Wayne head that came with really stretched out Pennywise eyes, and that was really unfortunate. And so I got a little nervous when I got the alert saying that mine shipped out, and I was just spending the days praying over here, please don't come with botched eyes, and thankfully... Mine did not come with those kind of eyes. It, they're still a little askew, but they're, they could have been worse. They could have been way much worse. And this is definitely a very well done head sculpt to be able to swap it out for the cowled one. So definitely respect that. But unfortunately, what I cannot respect too much is going to be the included lamp base accessory or whatever you want to really call this thing. Notice I have to consistently hold it. And that's because it comes disassembled in the box. And you have to pretty much just put the lamp head on top of the entirety of the pole. And the reason for why this was tossed in is still escaping me. Because from what I remember, and also kind of re-remembered upon doing a little bit of remembrance by just doing a simple Google image search, the lamp appeared during his battle with Superman for when he had the armored suit. So... Technically, tossing it in with the blue and gray suit, not only is it inaccurate, not only is it getting rid of the card holder that originally was included in some of these collector's editions, which it looks like he's starting to kind of do away with them because I believe the Huntress that also comes in this wave does not have the holder. So I guess enough people complained that they didn't want them. I got to be honest, I personally kind of did like them to hold up the card because it kind of gives it this collectability, this collector's edition premium. But uh, I'm not going to necessarily lose too much sleep. It is a little bit of a bummer, but if this means that we can at least get a bonus accessory that, that, that just favors the character a little bit better, then okay. But this lamp is not what I had in mind because, again, inaccurate, but also it is immensely top-heavy. I'm genuinely surprised it's holding up right now because literally every single time I try to pose this goddamn thing, either off to the side while I was waiting to capture B-roll or simply just playing around with it and posing the figure with the different, you know, versions of the Dark Knight Returns figures like Superman or with Batman here or the different version of Batman or maybe the Robin, etc. It would always fall over because that lamp piece at the top is just way too heavy. I don't know who was in charge of balancing this thing out as far as printing it, but they put just a little bit too too much filament in the lamp head and not enough in the base to make this thing actually stand up each and every single time you lay it down on a flat surface. Right now, like I said, it's pretty shocking that it's remaining, but oh, let's see, just nudging it ever so slightly, this thing just topples over. I got to be honest, if this was going to be the case, I would have preferred the card holder that everybody just did not like because at least that thing would stand up, I want to say about 90% of the time, and at least it will have a little bit of function. Here, sure, you can maybe display it with Batman, but technically it's in the inaccurate part of the whole overall graphic novel. And then on top of that, it's just 
keep falling over each and every single time. Especially being a resident of Southern California with all these goddamn earthquakes happening recently, it pretty much renders it useless. Whereas the 2021 version still has the novelty of including those horse pieces, so at least it kind of gives it this replayability of pulling out the rest of the wave so that you can then build a horse, pose it on the horse, the horse itself is kind of articulated somewhat. It may not be the most detailed version of the horse, I mean you can probably turn to Mafix or Mafix for something like that, but seeing as this lamp was the thing to kind of replace the card holder, even if you have the good accessories of the included uh, brass knuckle battering hand and then the alternate head sculpt, I gotta be honest, I'm a little disappointed in this brand new version of a collector's edition uh, variant of the Dark Knight Returns Batman. Even if it checks off the box of now having the blue and gray aesthetic, you still don't have the proper oval design behind the bat symbol on the front. You're still dealing with the repaint that didn't really change much of the sculpt except for maybe a few bits of expression on his head sculpt. But outside of that, it's pretty much the 2021 version, so at that point, it really does boil down, do you prefer black and gray or blue and gray? If you prefer black and gray, gotta be honest, just stick with this and then maybe hop on eBay or Mercari or whatever, and if somebody's willing to part with that alternate head sculpt so that you can buy it piecemeal or a la carte and have it shipped, then there you go. Outside of that though, you're not really missing out on this rendition. And the lack of a cloth wired cape is that last straw on top of that camel's back to give this a 6 out of 10. It's an overall okay re-release, especially since you're still dealing with one of the finer bucks that McFarlane has produced as far as the girthiness of the physique, the musculature, the really good head sculpt. But there's just so many missed opportunities here that if you already have the 2020 release and you're happy with the black and gray, and you simply just want to get some of these added accessories that are worthwhile, specifically that alternate Bruce Wayne head sculpt, I feel like someone on a online vendor marketplace is going to have you covered there. For now, I feel like we're still waiting for a definitive Dark Knight Returns version from McFarlane. You still have options out there as far as Mafex and a couple of other companies out there that are probably third party, potentially unlicensed. But as far as McFarlane, I feel like maybe later down the line there could be the chance of a platinum chase with the proper yellow oval symbol or maybe something to really change it up or hell one that comes with that goddamn cape that would have been awesome especially for posing him in some of those dynamic poses in front of the lightning strike that would be really really cool but let me know down below if this is a letdown or do you think that you'll still pick it up even with the black and gray still out there or possibly being in your collection if that kind of changes your mind whatever you have to say i'm looking forward to seeing what your comments have to read down below and while you're down there, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, thumbs down if you did not. Shout out to our executive producers that are helping out the channel at the level 2 tier, Tom Bowling. And as always, you guys know what to do. Stay humble, and I'll catch you later.